Big news at Staples Center where LeBron James and the L.A. Lakers were hosting the Atlanta Hawks for a little matinee. And you see LeBron James crumble to the ground there on the floor. He was diagnosed with a high right ankle sprain. High right ankle sprain. He is out indefinitely. So we'll get another report on that later in the week with LeBron James. But he walked it off with the L.A. Lakers lost to the Atlanta Hawks and the Hawks. The Warriors will see them later this week. Hawks have won eight straight under Nate McMillan and LeBron James tweeting out nothing angers and saddened me more than not being available for my teammates. I'm hurt inside and out right now. The road back from recovery begins right now. Back soon like I never left the kid from Akron. LeBron James, well, I don't, you know, the ankle injury is tough and who knows how long he'll be out, but he didn't tear his ACL or anything, right? It's right. going to be back soon. Yeah, no, this could have been way more dangerous. So thank God it's just a uh, high ankle sprain. But high ankle sprains are nothing to play with. So that was one of those things you got to take your time uh, with coming back. And one thing Mully mentioned uh, during the break, he walked off the court, you know, looking right. pretty solid. You know, he's a machine anyway. Right. So. He's a machine, yeah, man. He's, he's going to be back. He's going to be fine. Yeah, high ankle sprain for most people, four to six weeks. <laughs> for LeBron James, Four to six hours. <laughs> <laughs> he heals up. He never gets hurt. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully he'll get he'll get soon uh, get healthy as soon as possible. Um, Anthony Davis is out. Yep. I mean, the best case scenario for the Lakers is while their two superstars are out, they can firm up their bench yeah. because that's really going to be a determining factor. You know, Anthony Davis and LeBron James are going to dominate their positions. Can they get consistent play? From their role players. Yeah, Kuzma, THT, big yeah. spots for them moving forward here. Let's hear from Jordan Poole, who's definitely earned some big minutes from Steve Kerr with his recent seven game stretch. Um, Jordan, uh, Juan was in here a minute ago talking about how, you know, he's been one of your fans all along and how much he's been riding with you. And he also said that he, he felt like you got an unfair treatment when you first came to the Bay because people were on your back a little bit. Did you sense any of that? Um, well, first, first and foremost, I really thank God allowed me to be in the position I'm in uh, today. But credit to Juan, you know, he's worked so hard, and I think he knows more than anybody. You know, the Bay is his town, his city is who he is, is what he represents, you know, and um, he knows the Bay more than any of us. And, and just for him to, you know, go to bat for me and, you know, say what he said, it, it just shows who he is as a person. It shows his character and, um, his charisma, and, and obviously I wish nothing but the best for him. He had an amazing game today, but, um, you know, the media is what the media is, and um, it's 2021, and it's the world that we live in, so um, we signed up for this job, and it's just something that comes with it. You got to find ways to keep pushing and um, not get distracted, but um, to all the good fans and everybody who's supporting us and, you know, continuing to be positive, we need that, and we um, are always looking for that, and it, 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 it definitely helps a lot. Do you still avoid social media? Yeah, I'm not on it right now. <laughs> Jordan, what is your confidence level right now? Uh, in terms of, in terms of what? In terms like, of performance. I mean, you grab the rock when you walk out to the floor, and it's like, boom, everything comes together. Well, I feel like it's just it's just the work. Um, it's just the work, and you know, obviously, I'm young and I got a long career ahead of me, but. Um, you know, I really am always going to go back to, to the work just because I, it's been proven, you know, these last couple of games from everything that I've did this summer and, you know, continue to the point. So, I mean, my confidence has never left, you know, it's who I am as a person. It's the reason I'm in this league. It's the reason I made it this far. Um, you know, shout out to my parents and coaches early on for instilling that in me and it is who I am as a person. So, um, no matter the performance, I'll never lose the confidence. Um, because it's what got me here. Jordan, Mark Haynes with Clutch Points. What was the toughest part about losing tonight's game? Um, I think just because we felt like we had it. You know, we were neck and neck, and you know, obviously they're a good team and credit to, to the Grizzlies, but uh, we got to find ways to pull it out at the end of the game, you know, find ways to, to get the win and um, execute down the stretch. Um, but... You know, we got to just learn from this one and, and get on to the next one because we got a game in a couple of days. Joe Hawks with uh, Bob Miller Sports Break and more. Has a game feel like it's, has your game feel like it's slowed down uh, or the game uh, intensity is kind of slowed down for you where you're just, uh, it seems like you can just play at this level? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it comes with experience. It comes with work. It comes with games. You know, it comes with um, learning. It comes with questions. You know, I think if the game slowed down for everybody, everybody would do it, right? But you got to continue to learn and find ways to improve. And you can always improve night in, night out. Um, but the more experience you get in, you know, um, the best that you have when guys have been through it, the more they help you, the, the quicker you'll learn. Uh, this is Davide from Italy. Um, I'm curious about Nico Mannion, obviously, you know, my compatriots, let's say. Uh, you've been with him in the in the bubble with the G League. Uh, what have you seen from him in terms of uh, him getting better and improving to the point that he's yeah. having some minutes? In the uh, well, first of all, um, I'm extremely excited for Nico. You know, that's the, the little bro, and he's he's fought so hard. You know, he's, he's gotten his opportunity, and he's made the most of it. Um, being able to come in in a second unit and, and just run a show, um, it's something that we need, and he's extremely talented and extremely um, aggressive, and he works hard. You know, so um, we'll just continue to keep teaching him and learning him and trying to put him in the best position because uh, we need him in order to, to be successful. Jordan, you just highlighted that your family is a big reason for your motivation. Are they the biggest reason for you being motivated and putting all the extra work? All the guys compliment you and saying you're the hardest worker on the team. It's a pretty big compliment for all these guys. Um, yeah, you know, shout out to the rest of the team and everybody who. Um, who publicly went and said that. I think DG said something about it um, one, and it's just amazing for your leaders to you know publicly say that. But um, everybody has their own reasons for their motivation. And, um, you know, something drives everybody, you know, and um, I have my reasons and everybody has theirs. All right, let's bring in Kareth Burke, our Warriors reporter here on Warriors Post Game Live, presented by Toyota. And I'm looking at the box score here. Jordan Poole had a solid game. Oubre a solid second half. JTA came on with 11 points, yeah. six rebounds, and six assists. But, Kareth, do you want to highlight Alan Smiley Geach? <laughs> Alan Smiley Geach, 5,008 minutes, but he did hit the three to open the game. What is about it, Alan Smiley Geach, Kareth, that you want to discuss? Is this a mystery to you? Or are you kind of like sideways dissing me like right now? Like, why nah. does she want to talk about Smiley? Well, I'll tell you why, because he's such a popular topic in my mailbag. Lots of fan intrigue in Smiley. And the fact that he got his first career start tonight and then he knocked down a three to open. Come on, let's give Smiley a little bit of shine. But of course, Vontae, I, I am going to put it. There it was right there, the flex in the roar from Draymond. <laughs> um, but well, we do need to put this in context for Smiley because it has been tough to find minutes for Smiley this season. In fact, he had a total of four minutes and 51 seconds over two NBA games this season before tonight. And those were mop up minutes. So it was pretty huge to call on Smiley to start, to, to have him guard a double double machine and Jonas Valanciunas. It feels like the coaches gave him this instru instruction. Don't leave Valanciunas <laughs> and box out, which Smiley did as aggressively and as doggedly as possible, but the doggedness also resulted in some very early foul trouble. He picked up three real quick in the first quarter and then two more real quick in the third quarter. So looking at Smiley's stat line, you're right, Bonte. Eight minutes, three points, five fouls. Also zero rebounds and zero assists. So you want to see a little bit more there. And the trouble is that foul trouble means Smiley didn't have a chance to make an impact tonight. And the Warriors need to evaluate him. It, he's in year two right now. Um, he just he just played in the G League bubble, um, but you want to see what he can do at this stage in NBA games. And um, circumstances kind of dictated that he's the guy at the end of the bench. And he's the guy who, you know, he's been impacted by that very long COVID break when the Warriors were off for nine months. He's been impacted by injuries. So when it comes to development, it's been interrupted, and it does feel like the clock is ticking for Smiley a little bit. Kareth, real quick, we got about 10 seconds here. Why are the fans so intrigued with Smiley Keats? Whenever he plays, whenever he starts, whenever he puts up a shot, people go crazy. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I think you want to root for an underdog, and he's young, and he, he, he did, you know, he was the youngest player in the G League. So I think when you have, like, a raw talent, people are really interested to see if you can be shaped into something. That was the hope for the Warriors, but there might not be enough time to shape it. All right, Kareth. We're both uh, trying to figure out this mystery here. Good stuff, as always, Kareth. We'll see you on Tuesday. Let's get to Nico Mannion, who's at the podium right now. Three for six from the floor, nine points. And Nico starting to get some more minutes here with the Golden State Warriors in that second unit. Let's hear from Nico. 
Nico, what was so frustrating about tonight's loss? Um, just the fact that it's a back-to-back. -back. We uh, think we had the juice. We, you know, we battled. I think Coach Kerr said it too. We we fought today, and uh, there's just certain points in the game we need to be able to just close it, even if it's early. You know, hit hit hit, hit big shots, uh, make simple plays, just do the little things. Um, and I think we had a chance to do that maybe late first half, early second half, uh, and that's really what we're working on. So that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, seeing the fact that we could have gone three and zero on the road trip, um, this would have been a huge win for us. But um, it's just back to the lab. You know, we got we got a big one coming up, I think Tuesday, and uh, we're we're gonna be ready for that. Hey Nico, this is Davide from Italy. Um, congrats for you know the game. Uh, uh, what are you learning in this new role uh, that is helping you grow? Um, I think the biggest teacher is experience, especially in this league. So just with the more minutes, uh, the more experience I get, I think it's just the more comfortable I'm getting. And uh, I'm learning kind of how to pick my spots. I think that's a big thing, just learning uh, how to play my game within the offense, um, still playing free, but playing under control. Uh, there's a bunch, of, a bunch of things I'm learning, but uh, DG today told me just, I looked a little hesitant last night. Um, he told me to just be aggressive tonight and be myself. So um, it's nice when I have someone like that, um, like DG and you know a leader and a vet, telling me to just play my game. It, it uh, comforts me, and makes me feel better, and allows me to to really play my game.